Oh, you're back! Jeez, guys, where'd you go? One moment you were there, the next you disappeared. You scared the life out of me. Uh, we're so sorry. We were just... Uh, uh, it's kind of hard to explain. Uh, fair enough. <laughs> well, the mountain road is pretty hazardous, and it's easy to get lost in the fog. So from here on out, stay close to me. The docks are just a bit further. One step at a time. Hang in there. Wait, and get behind me. I'll handle this. Subject. <sighs> Seems like we 
really can't go anywhere without running into treasure hoarders, can we? Yeah, it's not uncommon for deliveries to get intercepted. That's why this job needs guards like us. I'm always impressed by your moves back there. You seem like a real pro at your job. Oh, <laughs> that's not a skill I learned on the job. It's just a hobby. Have you ever heard of wushu dancing? Really? Wushu dancing is famous in Chunyu Vale. Performers might be invited to promote the opening of a business or to spread good fortune during a holiday season. But I must admit, it has nothing on the popularity of the Li Yue Opera. I'm also well aware that people in Li Yue Harbor aren't exactly jumping at the chance to watch wushu dancing. So, it's not something I do full-time. Huh? You have two jobs? How do you have the energy to do all that? <laughs> it's not that tiring. You just have to take a rest. Ah, Paimon gets it, so you must sleep a lot then. Not really. Just yesterday I stayed up all night playing cards. Oh. Uh... Let's go. The docks are just up ahead. Sorry, sorry. Did I push the pace a bit too much? I mean, you were the ones who said you were travel experts. Leo is just too hilly. Floating up and down so much. Where's Paimon now? Oh, Paimon was finally satisfied and now her poor stomach's empty again. Aw, would you like some winter melon cake? I have some on me that I bought from a store. Uh, you might want to pace yourself there, or you'll be too full to eat a proper meal later. Paimon never gets too full. Just like... Oh, just like you apparently never get tired, no matter how far you walk or how many jobs you work. Ah, I see. Then here you go, Paimon. And for you, Traveler. Enjoy! And here's some for you too, Uncle Bosu. Don't think I forgot about you, my friend. I'll just set it to the side here for you. She was going to starve to death for a minute there. <laughs> that close of a call, huh? <sighs> I've been eating winter melon cake ever since I was a kid. You can buy them from all sorts of places, whether it's a small vendor on the side of the road or a big restaurant in the city. But each place produces cakes with a slightly different flavor. If you like these ones, I can give you the address of the shop I bought them from. I'll just have to check when we get back. <laughs> oh, oh. All my jabbering must be making it difficult for you to enjoy the scenery in peace, huh? Don't be afraid to tell me to zip it for a little while, okay? Really, I won't be offended. It's okay. Paimon is kind of enjoying listening to your chitter-chatter. Aww, a fed Paimon is a happy Paimon, huh? <laughs> hey, Paimon could be in a good mood anytime she wants! <laughs> Fresh bamboo for the... Woohoo! We're here! Don't forget your things and uh, watch your step as you get off the raft or you're in for a swim. Thanks for the ride, Uncle Bosu. You take care of yourself now. I'll see you some other time. Okay, follow me. This way is fastest. We'll have to take the elevator up to the secure transport agency.
How should I put it? Come on, spit it out! Do you see that group of people over there? Those are my relatives. Wow, you sure have a big family. Once they start buying things, they won't stop perusing till it gets dark. This is bad. <sighs> They're your family, not your arch enemies. What's there to be afraid of? Unless... Oh, did you do something horrible to them? No, it's not that. I'm just... not that good at dealing with my family. It would be best if we could steer clear of them. I'll explain more when we have the chance, but... right now, we've got a job to do. Pretty packed. Let's go straight. Slow and steady wins the race. Wait here for a second. Maybe my aunt will leave. She's gone! Let's go! Left, run! To the right, and... Up. Wow, you guys are good! I'm impressed. That was nothing! It was a piece of cake! Oh, winter melon cake to be exact. <laughs> you really liked it, huh? Ooh, you know what? I'll buy you a whole bunch and pile them so high you can swim in them. As long as you don't want to drowning, Paimon! <laughs> hey, Uncle Jirigoy. These are my friends, the Traveler and Paimon. They came to deliver some goods with me. So, I guess I'll go ahead and take these over to Uncle Yongzan then? Yes. Thanks for your hard work. I should thank you both for your trouble as well. Please take a seat and rest for a bit. I'll prepare some tea. Hey, we're already here, aren't we? No harm in taking a load off for a bit. Plus, I know the Secure Transport Agency has some great Songwa tea stash around here somewhere. I promise you, one sip and you'll be hooked. Anyway, you just sit down and relax, Uncle Jirgui. Who would I be if I just sat here and let you go through all this trouble? Leave this to me. I have to be up and about to drop these goods off anyway. What's a little extra time on my feet? Oh, you aren't too picky, right, Traveler? I know Paimon prefers things on the sweeter side, so I won't steep the tea too long. And I'll add some dim sum pastries on the side. Aww, you noticed what Paimon likes? How long have you two known Gami? Oh, not long at all. We just kind of tagged along on his trip to Yuan Wharf. He's just a super welcoming guy. We became friends, you know, just like that. <laughs> That's just how he is. He's the attentive sort, really knows how to look after his own. 
A while ago, one of our guards had to take off work, said his joints were hurting due to the rain. Gomming personally went all the way to Boo Boo Pharmacy to get some medicine for him from Dr. Baiju, then traveled through the night to deliver it back to him. That young man has such a good head on his shoulders. How can anyone not love him? I mean, there is his dad, but, well, ask anyone else. And... Uncle Yongsan says that he doesn't have the personnel to spare for this delivery right now. So what do you think, Uncle Jirigui? Should I go ahead and deliver it instead? <sighs> it feels like we've troubled you enough already. It's kite-making materials, though. It could be for a kid. I'm sure the sender wants it delivered before Lantern Ray. Oh, uh, by the way, here, have some tea. All right, then. Deliver it if you want to. Ooh, are you free in two days? How about we grab some dim sum from Xinyue Kiosk? My treat, and don't even think about trying to pay. Whoa, that's way too generous of you. Uh, don't mention it. Just think of this as a thank you for all your help. Besides, the thing between me and my family... It's a long story. It might take some time to tell. Sounds good! Paima never says no to free food. Alright, then I'm off. See you in two days. Oh, and Paimon, make sure not to eat too much before then. Don't say I didn't warn you. Is he underestimating Paimon? <laughs> She's just gonna have to show him how much she can really eat. Anyway, is Gomming's family situation really that complicated? He has such a happy-go-lucky personality. Plus, he's an enthusiastic and diligent worker. It's hard to imagine a guy like that being troubled by much. Hmm, how should I put it? Since he already plans to tell you himself, you don't need an old man like me to add my two cents. You seem to be around the same age, so you might have a lot in common. Perhaps you could help him talk things through. Consider it a favor to me. If you have the time, maybe you can make a little flag for us to wave about. It can say, we provide aid in spades. Couldn't hurt to advertise our services, right? Well, I can certainly arrange that. Is there anything else you wanted to say? Wait, seriously? But if you're going to get us something, she'd much rather have winter melon cake instead. <laughs> yeah, it seems like Gomming really has rubbed off on you. Would you like some more tea? I think there's some left. No thanks. We came all this way and still haven't gotten a chance to look around the wharf. We should see the kinds of kites they got. Maybe they'll have ones you can't find in Liyue Harbor. All right, then. Please do let me know if you'd like more tea. You're welcome to stay as long as you like. Only with solid practical training can you unleash real punches. The way you speak, one might have presumed you were displeased to be in one's presence. Take note, Paimon. You could learn a thing or two about how to respect your elders. Ugh, starting on the elder stuff already, huh? Shouldn't you be back in your cave tinkering away at some kite-related thingamabob or something? What brings you out here? What's with that huge box next to you? Ah! Paimon gets it. You're here to do some shopping, aren't you? And what of it? The Qixing's decision to integrate Fontanian technology into said kite flying competition is of no consequence to oneself. Did you expect one to willfully compete against the whimsical trends of worldly sentiment, or perhaps even fall to petty sulking over such? Those things exactly. That's just what Mountain Shaper and Moon Carver told us. Or Tia something and Ho. Oh. Paimon can't be bothered to remember what their aliases were called. 
Anyway, they went to Leeway Harbor to look for you. They even asked us to pass along their regards if we ran into you. Oh, huh. Tian Yun? It appears time has quite flown since one's arrival in Liyue Harbor. How could one have forgotten about those two old fossils? <sighs> one shall have to bring them back some divine herbs to atone for this slight. Nay, given that one has ventured all this way to Yilong Wharf, tea would be more advisable. A great thought has illuminated one's mind once again. One is reminded that certain purchases have yet to be made. Perhaps you two could wait here whilst one performs this task. It'll be but a moment. Huh? Wait here? You really just gonna ditch us here to watch your stuff? Oh, that woman really just does whatever she wants. Hey, not you too, Traveler! Oh, all this time on ditching is super not appreciated. Ugh, just... Come back soon, okay? Paimon... Paimon doesn't want anyone to try and steal the stuff! Welcome. Please have a look around. We only sell teas of the finest quality, sourced directly from Chaoying Village. Might I recommend the Sunglo variety? It's one of our specialties. Now, that sounds promising. One will bring some back for those old fossils, and all will be well. Two boxes will do. Wonderful. By the way, we're actually running a special Lantern Rite promotion. Buy three boxes, get 10% off. Four boxes will net you 20% off. Hmm. 20% off four boxes. This merchant strikes a fair bargain. One might as well give some to Morax and Ping, too. Then four shall suffice. Hmm, I see. Are you intending to give these as gifts? If so, perhaps I can interest you in these exquisite gift sets. Buy ten, get half off. Look at the magnificent design. And the red ribbon gives quite the festive flair, don't you think? Such a gift would be sure to impress any lucky friend or family member. Hmm, ten boxes. Seems rather excessive. But if one factors in the conqueror of demons and one's disciples... Hmm... Ten! Nice round number, don't you think? Of course you do. I'll even shave a little extra off the price for you. That is agreeable. One will... Um, I will have these boxed up then. Of course, of course. Right away! I see you have quite the eye for fine items, mademoiselle. Perhaps some of my wares might also be of interest to you. I'm a toy merchant from Fontaine. You'll get nothing but the finest and most intricate clockwork toys Mora can buy here. Each one sure to be a source of endless amusement. Hmm. Perhaps you could enlighten me then. When should said amusement be derived? Well, uh, that is, of course, best understood by playing with them yourself. If you could wait just a moment, I can bring one out and give you a demonstration. <laughs> there is no need for that. Uh, mademoiselle. Give me your newest and finest model, and be sure to package it securely. Ah, of course. Here you go. The instruction manual is... I can do without. Thank you. Oh, many watchful eyes surround this place. If one were to be spotted purchasing a mechanical toy such as this, a child's plaything no less, it would only invite scandal. There is no harm in bringing it back to study in secret. Did your shopping go smoothly? <sighs> Naturally. One may not delight in social interactions, but that does not mean one lacks such faculties. Uh, 
And you too? Are you not here to purchase things? We just haven't had time yet. It doesn't look like there are any kite stalls around Elong Wharf. But it does look like there are lots of goods from Fontaine. You are also planning to participate in the kite flying competition then? <clears throat> One means to say, you along with all the other youths. One has been entreated to share one's kite-making expertise, and indeed, there was little one could do about such persistent supplication. One moment energetic and earnest, and dejected the next. One had no choice but to acquiesce to these requests, and thus, one will be organizing a kite-making workshop to provide personal instruction in this art form. Oh, who will be participating then? Shuyu, Shenhe, Ganyu, and Yayo. Wow, that's quite a few people. Also, this is all pretty well, Xianyun, but it's not like you have to make your own kite to participate in the competition. You can't just buy one ready-made and call it a day. Ha! Huh. You speak of those equipped with the mechanical lifting device, do you not? <sighs> Tis nothing but a crude piece of mortal machinery. The mechanism that one has developed was the fruit of millennia, of meticulous study. Let us not speak of the source of the mechanism's power, but rather its structure. It is composed of materials as light as bamboo and as strong as iron. This composition grants it the lightness of weight to ascend into the sky and the durability to follow the wind for many a mile. It is built with a series of intersecting rods that... <sighs> Never mind. It is unlikely the two of you will understand, even should one expend the effort to explain. One is better off saving one's breath. It sure seems like you want to talk about it, though. So, will you be attending the workshop or not? Huh? Wait, you've been trying to invite us this entire time? All right then. No need to prepare the materials in any case. One has it all sorted. Arrive at Mount Outsong in two days. I shall be expecting you around midday. Are you leaving? Don't you want a guard to help you with that big box of yours? <laughs> Surely you jest. One goes as one pleases. For what reason would one need to rely on another? Uh, it can float? What kind of invention is that? One calls it the floating toting device. Huh. She seems pretty proud of that one. Look at her walk down the street. She seems so confident, but everyone around her is looking at her all funny. Paimon wonders... Uh, never mind. But anyway, that box of hers seems to be full of those mechanical lifty thingamabobs. Uh, not that Paimon was peeking or anything, she just... Uh, got a bit unsteady for a second and accidentally brushed the embroidery on top. And wouldn't you know it? All the stuff inside almost came bursting out! Paimon even went out of her way to keep it all together. All Paimon say is that Xianyun sure does try hard to save face. What did she call it again? A crude piece of mortal machinery? Paimon bet she just can't wait to take it apart and see how it's made. Totally! We should probably act like we didn't see anything, though. You know, in consideration of her feelings and all. After all, that is the propriety with which one should comport oneself. When it comes to an elder, right? <laughs> 